Why am I not concerned when Hayya ala khair al-amal is removed? Is this the sunnah of Rasulullah or the sunnah of others other than Rasulullah? For example, Salat al-Taraweeh. If I am so concerned about the sunnah of Rasulullah, then why is it that I come and perform a salah which was not there in the time of Rasulullah? Everybody knows that only the salah which is wajib is one which is performed in jama'ah. Well, Taraweeh has not seen as being wajib. It was changed in the time of the second Khalifa. He himself admits by saying it's a good bid'ah. Now, if it's a good bid'ah and you have such a concern for the sunnah of Rasulullah, then why don't you publish leaflets to protect this sunnah? Why is it that the sunnah of fasting on Ashura received the most money? Why? Because there is an agenda behind it. The agenda is to divert attention away from what happened to Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Likewise, you find on the eighth point, which was what? The point comes forward that sometimes in Islam, when there is a law given, the law may be changed later on depending on the circumstances. What do I mean? In Islam, can I drink alcohol? No. But if I am stuck in a desert and I'm about to die, am I allowed to drink alcohol? Yes. It's a secondary law. In Islam, am I allowed to eat pork? No. But if I am stuck with no food, am I allowed to eat pork? Yes. It's a secondary law. Likewise, we find in Islam that sometimes there is an event which may be changed depending on the circumstances. For example, Rasulullah, when you go to see him, do you normally have to pay to go and see Rasulullah? No. But when some of the companions used to gather around Rasulullah, not allow anybody else to come and see him. What happened? The verse came down in the Quran, in Surah Al-Mujadala, verse number 12, that those who come and see Rasulullah have to make a payment. The only man who made a payment was Amir al muminin Nobody else made a payment. Normally, I don't have to pay to see Rasulullah. But on this occasion, a law was sent down. Likewise, with the fasting of Ashura, it may have been originally a fast about fasting on the 10th of any month. But Imam al-Baqir says what? لَمَّا نَزَلَ صِيَامْ شَهَرْ رَمَضَانِ تُرِكَ صِيَامْ or تُرِكَ صَوْمْ عَشُورًا When the fast came of the month of Ramadan, the fast of Ashura was made void. Meaning what? Meaning Turika means it was completely stopped. There was no more fasting on Ashura. If we say Rasulullah did fast on Ashura in the first year of Hijrah, Imam al-Baqir says, لَمَّا نَزَلَ صِيَامْ شَهَرْ رَمَضَانِ تُرِكَ صَوْمْ Ashura. As soon as the fast of Ramadan, because Ramadan, the fasting became wajib in the second year of Hijrah. It says as soon as Ramadan's fasting became wajib, then the fast of Ashura was stopped. And that's why Abdullah ibn Sinan, companion of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam, comes to see Imam al-Sadiq when he comes to see him in and around this period. He says to him, O oh, Imam, he comes forward and says to him, O oh, Imam, what is your view about fasting on Ashura? Listen to his words. He says to him, O oh, Abdullah, in regards to the fast of Ashura, he says to him, do fast in the sense of what? Keeping away from food and drink. Because Abba Abdullah had no food or drink on the 10th of Muharram. He then said to him, but if you are going to fast, then don't fast the whole day. Make sure you break your fast. Do not have the niyyah of fasting the whole day. And when you break your fast, or when you are about to eat, eat a small amount, not very much. Because the stomachs of Al Muhammad were empty on the 10th of Muharram. And then he says to him, what? He comes forward with a very important line in this area. He says, when you are to eat, eat one hour after Asr. And don't eat in the one hour before sunset. Why? Because in that one hour before sunset, Abba Abdullah was killed. Abu Abdullah was killed one hour before sunset. Because as you know, many of his companions were killed. His family members were killed. Even there are ahadith which say that he lay on the grounds of Karbala for a couple of hours. Imam al-Rada says, my father, Abu Abdullah, was not killed. He was slaughtered. They said to him, why? 
He said a person who's killed knows when his death is coming. Whereas when you are slaughtered, you are awaiting that final strike. And that's why the only aim of talking about the fast of Ashura was to divert the people's attentions away from what happened to Abu Abdullah on the 10th of Muharram. Because there is no greater event in the history of Islam. Why? Because it is the master of the youth of paradise who's been killed. The grandson of the greatest messenger. And the grandson of the greatest message who was killed on the 10th of Muharram. Ibrahim was saved from the fire of Nimrud. Ayyub's illness was cured. Yaqub's eyesight was returned to him. Nuh's people were saved. And Musa and the children of Israel. However, none comes near what happened to Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Because what happened to Abu Abdullah al Hussein is something that's rocked the very foundation. And on this, the first night of Muharram, we remember Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam. And remember the calamities, because these nights are really a devotion to her stand in allowing us to remember her. Because the ladies of Abu Abdullah went from Karbala towards Kufa, towards Sham. When they got to Sham, can you imagine Sayyidah Zainab? This lady, 56 years old. There are some ladies in their 20s, they feel the pain of heat. At 56 years old, chained. At 56 years old, receiving the whips of Shimr bin Dil Joshan. At 56 years old, acting as a mother to all the orphans. They were taken towards the court of Yazid and Sham. When they were taken <coughs> towards the court of Yazid and Sham, what happened was Yazid at the time was married to a lady called Hind. Hind was the daughter of Abdullah ibn Amr. Abdullah ibn Amr was the cousin of Uthman ibn Affan. Abdullah bin Amr, Hind had been with him. When he died, she became a servant in the house of Ali ibn Abi Talib. When Ali ibn Abi Talib died, she was a servant in the house of whom? In the house of Imam Hassan. When Imam Hassan was poisoned by Muawiyah, Muawiyah forced her to marry Yazid. 